So, we can all agree that royal families are odd, right? They're all rich, power-hungry, and they really have no guardrails to keep them in check. True, we could be talking about any billionaire in this day and age, but still, some royal family members develop odd obsessions, habits, or even rules to live by. Some of these are born from necessity, mental illness, or just sheer boredom. So today on History Scalpel, let's cut into five royally odd obsessions, habits, and rules of royal families. Obsession, the royal giant army. We all collect things, right? Some people collect comics, watches, or Pokemon. But what do royal rulers collect? Well, in the case of Frederick Wilhelm I, who ruled Prussia, the precursor of modern-day Germany from 1713 to 1740, he collected giant soldiers. Wait, what? We didn't glitch out there. That was the thing he actually did. We don't mean statues of giants. We mean he recruited everyone over six feet tall to be in a special military unit. Like any elite force, this giant brigade was afforded the best food, pay, uniforms, and accommodations. This unit even had its own name, Potsdamer Riesengarde, which translates to Giant Guard of Potsdam. Many of these soldiers volunteered for the unit, but much like a modern-day coach trying to build a team, the king would pay common folk for their tallest sons. His desire for a giant army was so well-known that leaders from other countries tried to get in Frederick's good graces by sending him tall soldiers. At its peak, this unit had an estimated 3,200 troops. Naturally, this raises two questions. What if a person wasn't considered tall enough for the leader's liking? Luckily, being a rational human being, Frederick would have these men helped, and that he would have them put on the rack to stretch them out like a prototype of Stretch Armstrong. It should come as no shock that many died from this. The second question people wonder is, of course, why he was so obsessed with these giants. While we can't be totally sure, it might be because he was only five foot three, so maybe he was trying to overcompensate? Hopefully, when giving orders, he wasn't short with his troops. Rule: No monopoly for the royal family. We've all played the game Monopoly, right? People buy and sell properties, someone plays the banker, and players collect $200 once you pass go. You know the game. Well, it may shock you to know that the British royal family has a rule that bans the playing of this game. What? <laughs> Why would they ban the game? Simple. It's Monopoly. Or as Prince Andrew put it when he spoke to the British newspaper, The Independent, in 2008, we're not allowed to play Monopoly at home. It gets too vicious. As much as we dunk on royal families, there's something kind of humanizing about the idea that the British royal family played Monopoly so intensely that it warranted its banning. It was as if the family had some well-documented experience of taking over territories and treating the native population like tenants or something. Having said that, we kind of like the idea of all of them sitting around the table playing for hours on end until someone, maybe even the queen, snaps and ends the game. A major difference in the way regular people and royals play the game is that royals can actually use real money, and they still consider it monopoly money. We can't know for sure, but we suspect when the queen played, she chose the dog. Habit. Forget ruling. Playing with dolls really rules. We've all heard the saying, boys and their toys, right? The saying refers to the fact that some men, no matter how old they are, remain little boys who are fascinated with toys. For some, it means buying a speedboat, a motorcycle, or actual toys. And that's all fine and dandy, providing it doesn't prevent a person from doing their job. We would imagine that someone tried to convey this message to Tsar Peter III, who ruled Russia briefly with his wife Catherine the Great. And by short, we mean he ruled from January to July 1762 before being deposed. Here's the thing. Tsar Peter seemed more interested in playing soldier than being a leader or husband. He was fascinated with what we now call action figures, using them to enact his own imaginary wars. His wife, Catherine, once lamented, there is nothing worse than having a child husband. It's reported that Tsar Peter had a fondness for military uniforms, buttons, and pageantry, but little else seemed to capture his attention. However, he apparently once accused a rat of treason and sentenced it to death by hanging, which he did himself with a little noose and rope. In the end, his reputation was so poor in Russia that he was deposed and replaced as ruler by his wife. This may be why so many of us have heard of Catherine the Great, as opposed to Tsar Peter III. 
Maybe he just needed a better nickname, like Peter the Toy Man or something. Still, talk about playing king of the castle. Habit, the prince who loved himself too much. Years ago, a stand-up comedian named Al Lovell made a joke that went, in order to love others, you must first love yourself, right? Well, I'm just not finished loving myself. Even though he said those words long after Christian VII of Denmark died, we have a feeling that he would have agreed with those words wholeheartedly. He may have even tried to clap with one hand in agreement. That's because Christian VII's habit of self-love apparently was taken to the extremes. As the young monarch's compulsive masturbation habit became a known problem in the kingdom, shortly after he ascended to the throne in 1766 when he was 17, royal physicians were actually concerned. Now, to be fair, we can't stress enough that he was 17. Right, now all over the world, people his age are suffering from the same habit. However, in Christian's case, his habit reportedly interfered with his official duties. And when you're the one in charge, that's a pretty big deal. Despite the king's prediction to polish his bishop, he was actually married. However, it may come as no surprise that this habit of purging the ivory tower was one of the contributing factors that led his wife, Princess Caroline Matilda of Great Britain, to cheat on the king with his physician. In later years, it was believed that Christian VII's habit of continuously doing the five-finger shuffle had less to do with hormones and more to do with his suffering from schizophrenia or the medical condition known as porphyria. This condition is associated with a host of mental and emotional disorders as the body can't convert critical compounds needed for blood cells. Obsession A horse is a Caesar's best friend. One thing that binds all of humankind is that we all need friends. However, most people also suck, which is why so many choose animal companions. Royals and ruling people are no different. Some people choose canine or feline companions, whereas the Roman ruler Caligula went a different way. In this case, Caligula's best friend was a horse because, of course. While that in itself isn't terribly odd, considering horses are intelligent and make great companions, what is odd are the levels of affection he showed the horse, whose name was incited us. In fact, he treated that horse better than he treated most people. For starters, Incitatus didn't stay in some run-of-the-mill mud-filled stall. No, no, this horse's stall was covered in marble. And of course, there is no way this equine companion of the nation's emperor dined on regular oats. What was he, a peasant horse? Instead, for meals, Incitatus was fed oats that were mixed with gold flakes that he ate from an ivory manger. But it didn't stop there. What is something every horse needs? We'll give you a second, but we promise, whatever you're thinking, you're wrong. Servants. That's right, a staff of servants. Reportedly, Caligua provided this beloved horse with a staff of 18 servants that catered to his every need. When it came time for exercise, the horse's harness was decorated in jewels and precious stones. In fact, rumor has it that Caligua came within a hair of making his horse his official counsel. That horse lived a better life than most people in the Roman Empire. However, the treatment of this horse is easily the least crazy thing Caligua ever did. So there we have five of the most unusual habits, rules, and obsessions held by members of various royal families. While there might seem to be a bit of logic to some, I think we can all agree that others are way out there, even for royals. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed watching it. Make sure to share some of your favorites in the comments below.